Hi, this is DIY Newman again. Um, I uh, made a video a couple years ago about uh, installing solar panels on your roof um, by yourself, and I uh, got such an overwhelming response on that. Um, appreciate all, everyone that uh, watched it and subscribed, and also gave feedback on what can be better. Um, so I, I decided I'd do a follow-up video after two years to see how things are going. Um, so first of all. A lot of this content is is on my blog. In fact, all of it. Um, so if you in the description, there's there's a link down there. Um, so have a look at that, and it gives a lot of these details. So if if you miss something that I'm saying here, don't worry about it. It's all are, um, written out in the blog there. All right. So this is how things are looking now. Got uh, again ten there, five there. 10 there and then five over there. Um, things are looking really good. Um, I'm generating um, about 40 to 50 kilowatt hours a day in the middle of the summer and then it gets down to like 20, 25 in the middle of the winter. Um, so things are going well as far as production. It cost me about, um, again, like we said, four grand out of pocket. Um, and then each year, I'm, I used to pay about $1,500 in power, and now I'm at um, like 200 bucks a year. So I'm saving $1,300 a year. So my break even is still at three, about three years. I've saved so far about $2,600. Okay, um, and like I was saying before, I got a lot of great feedback from everyone on here, um, including electricians and pe like solar installers, so it was awesome. Um, so some of the things, lessons I learned um, that I probably would have done different next time, uh, or I will do next time when I install. Um, so I would have gotten more panels. I, um, I'm still pr producing quite a bit, but I probably would have gotten enough just to at least produce what I, gen what I use, um, and even more because um, they're super cheap. Like I could have paid another 500, 1,000 bucks for, um, Maybe even like hail damaged ones. I've seen those for 11 cents a kilowatt on on uh, Sun Electronics, um, or at least B or C quality, because there isn't that much difference in all the panels. Like whether you get A, grade A or grade C, and also the whether it's out of China or not doesn't really matter. I mean, there's a warranty on the U.S. ones, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, the other thing is on my panels, I um, you can see them there. I got the silver ones because that's just what they had at Sun Electronics, but I would have tried harder to get black ones. They just look nicer and they blend in a little better with the roof. I ended up actually painting um, the edge here, uh, just kind of along the edge. So these this part's silver, but these edges are black. That just made it blend in a little bit. So I, I painted it, but that was kind of a pain. Um, I also, um, even if you're over generating power, like you can always use it. Like I, I could probably convert some of my heating over to electric instead of gas, um, just stuff like that. So you can always use the power. So I would probably go bigger than smaller. Um, also, I would have uh, used, I, I would have gone on eBay and gotten a, a inverter there. My inverter ended up costing about $2,700 getting through Sun Electronics. Um, that's the, you get the best deal on panels from them, but the best deal for inverters is on eBay, uh, especially if you can get, I mean, I probably could have gotten the exact same seven kilowatt hour one for about um, $1,500 rather than 2,700. So that would have saved me $1,200 right there. Um, I would have used strut channel instead of lumber. I know that was, that was pretty controversial whether you should use lumber. So I, I use treated lumber um, there for my racking system. And that's what made it a lot less expensive than other systems. Um, but it's not quite as durable. It's still holding up fine. I think it'll hold up for 20 years, just like it's expected to. Um, a lot of that is because like the, the lumber is not even exposed to the elements, really. It's under the panels. Um, but it also made it a little harder. I ended up screwing, like, screwing the panels, like pinching them down, like, screw, like screwing into the lumber. Um, instead of drilling holes through the lumber and having bolts that squeeze it down. So in, I'm actually, I have some of these that are kind of slipping now a little bit. 
and I'm going back through and fixing all those to be pinching using bolts rather than just relying on the lumber. Um, so there's not really an advantage to using lumber. It's, it's a little less expensive, but I think strut channel would have been maybe a few hundred dollars more, but probably worth, uh, worth it. You can get strut channel just anywhere, like at uh, like Unistrut. Um, you can get it at electron, electric stores around you. Um, it, and, and also, um, I got some feedback about the, the I used rubber on the, the, like to protect it so the water doesn't get into the roof. I didn't have any problem with water getting in the roof. It's totally dry and clean. Um, but you can use flashing like to put these little metal sheets under the, the shingles and that's, that tends to keep the water out even better. Um, I probably would have wired through the attic instead. Um, so I, I used this conduit all around and um, it's worked out well, but it's, I was just kind of afraid of poking holes in my roof. Um, but I could, I could have just drilled a hole down and gotten down into the house through the attic. Um, one of the advantages of that would have not only be more protected, but, but also it, could, it would have enabled me to potentially put the inverter in the house. The inverter gets pretty hot in the middle of the day, like it, the fans come on and um, it's just a little less wear and tear on the inverter if you can get it inside. Um, and it just looks a little nicer without this conduit on your attic. Um, also, I got feedback about the grounding. So, um, for like light, if lightning hit this, I really was just trying to pass code. Or, um, but apparently, like the way I set it up, it wouldn't. If lightning hit, it really wouldn't work anyway because lightning doesn't travel at 90 degree angles. Um, so, I, and and also the lugs that I put on the bottom of the panels was just kind of a pain like they were hard to get on there and they're not really doing much for me anyway so probably would have just came up come up with a better grounding solution and not put them at, at 90 degree angles um, I bought I got stickers I again just to pass code I ended up printing out stickers from online but they've all fallen off since and they're not really doing anything for me so um, I didn't I never found any ones that were very cheap. I, like the cheapest stickers I found were like 80 or $90 for a set of them. So um, that's why I went the way I did, but um, you can probably find like better warning stickers um, online. Um, one other big one is I, I, on my taxes, I didn't account for the labor that I did. Um, so I could have deducted about, they, I believe it's about 60 cents per kilowatt hour that you can deduct in labor. Um, so that would have been another three to four thousand dollars in deduction, and then when you factor in your your income and everything, it, it probably would have knocked off about thirteen hundred dollars for me. Like I would have gotten a tax, um, like tax back of about thirteen hundred dollars. So, um, so instead of costing four thousand out of pocket, it would have been more like twenty seven hundred. Um, and then the last one is um, I got feedback that I'm crazy for wearing f uh, flip flops on my roof um, but I don't mind at all it's been working out great <laughs> so uh, thanks for all your feedback but I don't think I'm gonna change that one um, oh and one other thing is I've I actually have pigeons on my roof now like they like to nest under the panel sometimes especially in the winter when it's warmer under there um, so you might want to get something that scares them away or like those there's like that metal stuff you can put around the edges of your panels and it might you know that's pokey so they won't go under there so I'm still thinking about getting something that'll do that but anyway I, uh, I hope this helps um, it's been great uh, I appreciate everything I've learned from everyone that's uh, given feedback and uh, again subscribe um, I plan to make even more DIY videos and, and post them here um, and uh, best of luck to you don't be afraid to comment I, I pretty much reply to every comment on the videos so um, shoot your questions or comments or concerns and we'll get them taken care of. All right, thanks. Take care. See ya.